The following podcast contains explicit language. Fuck you, it does not. That's yes, awesome. It fucking does. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Oh, folks, welcome to the Diesel Performance Podcast. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. And Rich, Radio Rich. Radio, Radio fucking Rich. We gave him a microphone today, guys. We love it. Uh, this is our end of year episode. Yeah, dude. We were talking about it, you know, beginning of the week as we have our uh, routine podcast meeting. And what better way to do this than this? Yeah, yeah to be I honest agree. with you, yeah. as we went over the highlights of like what we thought was really good, I kept yeah. turning around to Chris going, wait, that was this year? Yeah. It, just, it feels like we've been doing it for so long. Yeah, yeah. It's well, a, you longer than me, but yeah, for sure. It's a Trump administration <laughs> podcast. Yeah, dude. <laughs> feels like 15 years. Well, it just goes to show, Paul, you're old as shit. <laughs> this is, this, well, I mean, not as old as Radio Rich. Right? <laughs> Why no. you got to bring him in the middle of this? Because <laughs> yeah. we gave him a microphone. <laughs> there you go. Uh, real quick, guys, industry news uh, sponsored by Duramax Tuner. That's going to be a new segment you guys will be hearing every week in 2018. Chris and I are going to grab some industry news. Yeah. Uh, Duramax Tuner has allowed us to use their name for this segment. Uh, this week, I want to say that we saw an awesome video come out from Ultimate Callout Challenge team. Uh, UCC is starting to post their competitors. Yeah. They have a really cool little snapshot yeah. of all the guys in it. So jump on their Facebook page, check it out, buy tickets if you haven't yet. And Dang. also the other big news, Chris, go with it. Oh, man. So over at DuramaxTuner.com, they released a new six-speed conversion for any of the 01 to 05 Duramax crowds, so your LB7 LOI guys. Uh, something a little different, something that's been in the woodwork now for a while. I don't want to really uh, say how long, but Nick's been working on this for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. I was telling so. a guy the other day that two years ago we had this kind of project yep. come up, and I sold it. And I ended up refunding it because it fucking sucked. Yep, yep. Um, and then so they've they've put it on the back burner and a lot of other projects since then. Then they started to dive into it here at some point in 2017, yep. unbeknownst to you yep. know phone jockeys like me and Chris. And um, yeah, when they brought it back out, it is it is solid. Yeah, and guys are like, oh, how much experience do you have with the six speed you know tuning? Well, we have a lot of experience with some of our competitors' kits. Right. We just felt we could do it better. Yeah. You know, nothing against our competitors, but anytime we can bring something in house and we have full control over what's going on and we can offer a more polished package, it's a home run. Absolutely. So we're really excited for that. So look out 2018, six speed your face. And feel free to read my blog on Diesel Tuner's blog about the six speed conversion. I read it. <laughs> yeah. I read it. Nick Nick made some recent edits. So if yeah. you read that two days ago, reread it again. It's yeah. like a whole new article. It makes a lot more sense. Public education. That's all I got to say. Ha! Ha, Finally can say it back to you, bitch. This guy. <laughs> um, also, another segment you guys will be continuing to hear is the Exergy do's and don'ts. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be focusing on the Ford Scorpion CP4.2. That's the 2011 to 2017 Ford 6.7 liter power strokes. Uh, I will kick it off with the do's. Do drop in a Scorpion 10 millimeter CP4.2. No tuning required. This is an upgraded CP4 for the Fords. Uh, it's built by Exergy. It is dialed in to the point that you literally don't even need a tune. You can just drop this in with all of the factory hookups, all of the factory installation components. It'll run and drive perfectly while having more peak capacity. Chris, what's the don't? What is the don't? Don't delete your factory lift pump. Now, this goes against anything we practice on the other models. True story. Right? So uh, don't delete the factory lift pump. Uh, the factory lift pump can support up to 800 wheel horsepower. Yeah. Um, and it works great with one of those 10 millimeter pumps. So again, minimal modification, drop in the pump, and away you go. It has filtration already yep. in it. Um, I do not believe it has an air separator, nope. uh, but it is it is a really solid component. These don't have uh, the CP4s on the Fords don't have a gear on the back to increase that low pressure flow. So you're actually getting your low pressure flow directly from the tank, uh, which they're solid. So don't fuck with it yeah. is, is the end of the story. There. Don't fuck with it. <laughs> That's the quote for the show. Alligator Performance <laughs> is running their 12 days of Christmas. We are on the last couple of days here right now, guys. Um Final days right now to jump on and buy a WC Fab Twin Turbo kit. Yeah. What can we say about Jason's kits, right? I mean, probably some of the nicest kits on the market. Hundreds of different powder coating colors that you can choose from. Uh, I would say like a factory fitment. It is, you know? yeah. Um, even though it's not factory. Right. Uh. <laughs> no, but the, I've, I've been at, at shows and things like that yeah. with a WC Fab Twin Kit installed, and you pop the hood, and like old car guys will come over and be like, oh, do these trucks come with those twin turbos? 
It's like, well, no, but I appreciate that question. Yeah. Like, yeah. that question makes me feel like I bought the right yes, kit. Yes, sir. My black truck came with neon yellow twin turbos <laughs> from the factory. Thank you for asking. And for the listeners out there, if you saw Paul's eyes bulge out of his head when he made that, uh, you know, uh, what would you say? You're acting, whatever. But uh, it was it was good. Yeah. It was good. Let me just say one thing. I've been over to Whirly's when they've been making those kits. Yeah. And they make them one at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they weld the pipe and then weld the pipe that's going to connect to that. And they do it sequentially. Yep. They don't just make 15 different pipes no. at once for, you know, the same mm. bend. And that brings up a good point. You know, when we talk to guys on the phone, wh- whether it's, you know, Wybridge kit, intercooler pipe, twin kit, whatever. And they're like, oh, are these on the shelf? No, they're not. Well, what's turnaround time? A week or two. And they get upset. Like you just said, these aren't prefabbed. They mm-hmm. build these kits. Then they have to go and get powder coated. So yeah, it just if, really goes to show what their process is all about. If you want shit mass produced from China, it's yeah. gonna it, it that's available too. It is for uh, a lot cheaper. But if if you want good high quality yep. USA made one at a time custom kits, that's why we deal with Jason and mm-hmm. WC there, Fab. There mm-hmm. is a guy. Ryan, who's actually welding each kit by hand. These aren't machine built. These are handmade. Yeah. You know, just Ryan Worley. What a riot. What a a riot. Later in the show. Later in the show. show. Later in the show. Okay. um, Today's show is really about going through the highlight reel over this last year. That's why we gave a microphone to Rich. Radio Rich. Radio Rich, uh, because he's been instrumental to making this show happen from all Mm -hmm. the way from its inception and and having the idea to do it, uh, to pushing us to get it done, to uh, making sure that some of these things happen. We're going to give you a real quick rundown of just kind of what we thought some of the highlights were this year, and then we're going to go through our favorites. Yeah. Right? Uh, So, Chris, why don't you kick us off? I mean, the first banger. So, I went through all the episodes from the January 1st till now, 2017, and you guys kicked it off with Gail Banks. Like, that was the banger. That was the first episode, like the the big, first big highlight that I saw or I heard. So I would say, you know, I know we're going a little against what we talked about prior to the show, but that is <laughs> yeah. that is the banger. You yeah. know, that was a big impact. It, it was um, a, a big shout out to Danny Voss for uh, setting up the, the yeah. very yep. first Gail Banks episode. Uh, from there, we launched uh, two more episodes. I think we did three mm-hmm. total with yep. them. They're all about an hour, hour and a half long. Yep. Quality G- content. Gail's a talker. We're talkers. Hey, good Nick information, though. I remember Nick's face when we told him that we got Gail Banks. He's like, yeah. Really? You never see Nick really? get excited about no. stuff. Like, it, that's no. just not his demeanor, his character. And he looked like a kid in a candy store when this was all getting brought up. Like, he was pacing around the shop. Like, he was genuinely excited. I remember yeah. him telling stories about, what, what's that one Danny Danny tells the story, too, and so does Gail. Actually, all three of these guys have told me the story about the same event. But there was a time that they went around. They did, like, diesels on the road. They did, like, some big drive across America okay. with your diesel trucks. Do you remember hearing yeah, about this, I Rich? remember that. Okay. So Danny told me the story. Then we got Gail on the phone. Gail told the story. When Gail got done telling the story, Danny told his version of the story again. When we left, the next day, Nick told me his version of the story. Oh, God. All three of them, like, had, like, were aware of that same event at that same location Very at the cool. same time. But, like... For yeah. Three totally different points of view on it. Um, all of them, all of them. That was the low light of our conversation. We had way more interesting <laughs> stuff to talk about than that. But, but yeah, all three of them definitely commented on it. Uh, Rich, what would you say about our experience interviewing Gail Banks? I thought that they were amazing. They were long. They went down a few rabbit holes, but I think that's okay. Yeah, and um, I was surprised with his sense of humor. Oh my God! Right, and that he just went right along with everything that we were saying like Danny had one of his one liners in there and Gail picked right up on that yep. and said there you go there's your one liner and, <laughs> and that was really a lot of fun it's just crazy can to I think- swear on this podcast <laughs> I, I yeah. still get I get a Facebook message like once a month yeah. about that it's just crazy to me like you know Gail isn't 20 years old and he's accomplished more than what most guys can accomplish you know or, or the combination of many people can accomplish and he is so quick with it oh you know, yeah so crisp and he knows dates times what do you accomplished in that month or that right. week i mean it's just it was mind-boggling and listening then, to those things and then danny said things like um i i wish i knew everything that you forgot and yeah. Gail says that's the thing i haven't forgotten anything yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. i like that low funny. blow <laughs> <laughs> it was so good it was so good uh gail was so sharp yeah. uh the visit out to gail banks nick and i actually went out and visited gail banks in person i will tell you uh that's the first time i've been to california it, it was a blast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've gotten to do a few work trips, but I will say that we flew out there. We landed the night before. 
We got to see one of our, our vendors out there, uh, Ira from Fish Tuning. Big shout out to Ira and Robin. Uh, they took us out for dinner, drove us to our hotel. We woke up the next morning at like, I mean, I'm sure I was up at 6 a.m. We got to Gail Banks' facility, which, by the way, is a compound. It's like eight different buildings spread across three blocks. Like, it, Whoa. it's huge. Like, we had to cross the street to get to one part of the compound, cross the street to get to the other part. Like, we're in warehouses that are like legit industrial warehouses packed to the top with turbos for rows just for rows and rows and rows you're just walking around with your, just my jaw hanging on the ground looking like an idiot I'm like, <laughs> it's so fucking cool. they were they were running um six six two or six five six two turbo kits while we were there ford six two turbo kits like i'm literally like dude get this guy off of this fucking machine and go put him on something productive like there's no way you're selling these gale like oh yeah 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 we'll box them up they'll somebody will want them don't worry Wow, wow. It, it was it was amazing. It was absolutely mind boggling. Uh, and then to see all of his cool projects and everything like that, Rich, you've been getting to edit all those videos. Uh, how did it look? It looks really good, and I just can't imagine though the breadth of knowledge that he has and all the different vehicles he talks about. Yeah. And um, <coughs> that facility must be worth a billion dollars, right? I mean, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Gail Banks Power, Banks Power. That's I mean, incredible. to have Gail in the building, I think, is worth a billion dollars, <laughs> right? It's, yeah. it's, it's it's crazy. And, like, I don't know if you guys just caught his video. He was telling us while we were out there. He still plays around with stupid shit like his Marauder. Uh, he's got basically an old Crown Vic. Uh, and he's throwing another, I don't know, a Coyote fucking gas Ford motor in it. Shit like this. That, wow. That's just his daily driver. That's just, like... He's just like, you know what? My guys don't have enough to do. So I got this crazy yeah. idea on how to just light up, you know, 40 grand and on fire. Well, we have another video coming out soon. It's going to be on the swirl and the flow. Oh, yeah. Head swirl. Head swirl. So that should be a lot of fun to watch. So interesting. <laughs> Very insightful. I go. think it'll be educational. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with any of the other adjectives you used, but it'll, it'll be <laughs> very educational. I agree with you. I think I think guys who are into it will, will fucking love that content. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're, like, new to diesel, it's probably – a little tech heavy. Yeah, obscure. Um, to, to run through some of our other highlights, I think one of our big ones, I think one that really made this podcast what it is, is the Ultimate Callout Challenge. Yeah, that was... Interviewing LeVon Miller was yeah. an absolute privilege uh, to meet a guy so humble. Uh, Derek Rose, one of the most lively motherfuckers we've had on the show. I mean, he is driven by passion. He is. I mean, <laughs> you, you know? can hear it. And like, yep. he's not like real cocky or a douchebag or anything like that. Nope. I don't mean to you know, say this in comparison to LeVon. They're, they're just very different personalities. Mm -hmm. Derek was so interesting. You could just imagine sitting down at a bar having a beer with Derek yeah. Rose. Uh, LeVon, I think you could imagine like being at a bonfire outside in a very quiet setting yeah. and listening to LeVon talk, yeah. right? Like the, just different atmospheres I think they, you would find them in. Uh, being live at the UCC, Getting to meet and and in person, um, God, everybody: Sean Baca, Wade Minter, Jaron Holder, Mike Graves, uh, just everybody. And I'm I'm leaving out so many people that that we interviewed there. Um, even I, the name escapes me now. Cody from from Godspeed Turbos. Do you That's remember right. that one? Yeah, Cody Callahan. Yeah. Cody Callahan, <laughs> uh, great guy. Um, God, there was just there was so many. Eric Merchant was is always fucking He's a hilarious. character, man. He? Oh God! Here's what's funny is every time you you find somebody who's met Eric Merchant, they say his name just like you just did with this, like that yeah. mother, that motherfucker. Yeah, let me that, tell you, that motherfucker, <laughs> um, for sure. I remember I was in Vegas at SEMA uh, two years ago now, and I'm I'm walking through like the Bellagio. You know how like it goes from like the strip mall, like inside mall, yeah. to the to the actual hotel and all of a sudden I hear somebody laughing and I'm like oh I know that fucking laugh and I turn around and start scoping it and I'm like and there's Eric Merchant with like his wife and Nick and you know I, there's like a group of them there and he's laughing he's making making fun of somebody yep, or something that's you know. that's Eric yeah for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah for sure so yeah yeah no, I was from there uh Chris I think one of the other big ones uh was definitely Nicola Menarini I wanted to bring that yeah. name up mm -hmm. Rich Tell me, tell me how the fuck you got Nicola Menarini because he is way too smart to talk to a guy like me. Well, in the podcast meetings, we started talking about actually reaching out to some GM engineer types, you mm -hmm. know, and talking about stuff, the L5P and whatever. And then, um, you know, going back to my old news days, thinking, well, there usually is a media representative for a big corporation like that. So I managed to find him. And then I reached out and they were very positive and that's how it all came together, you know? That was a really good episode. Mm -hmm. Insightful, you know, quality information. It really made you s take a step back and just soak it in. <laughs> you kind know what I mean? It, it, for me, it, it definitely did because I think it opened up my scale of, like, diesel's not 
in the U.S. Yeah. Diesels in the right. world. Yep. Uh, honestly, just the timing. What luck did we have on just the timing for that where you reached out right before they were shipping Nikola from Italy to Detroit or mm -hmm. Flint or yeah. wherever, Michigan. Um, so we happened to catch him while he was stateside, right. which he does not work stateside. He lives in Italy. He works in Italy. That's, that's where the XLDE program is, which is right. code for diesel uh, mm -hmm. in GM world, right? So we actually got the chief engineer of the XLDE program. He also was instrumental on on designing the 2.8 liter for the U.S. release and instrumental on uh, launching the 1.6 liter, which is now mm -hmm. out. He gave us some inside knowledge that like, I don't think we knew yet. Maybe there was like right. official releases, but the Equinox right. and the Vans were going to get those. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a really, really... For me, a big one. And I think, you know, think about the time frame. L5P was about to drop. Like, yeah. th that was all right. at the same time. Like, you couldn't have painted a better picture for that. It was. It worked out so. really well. And then, of course, Diesel Power Challenge. Yeah, that was a big one. That was a big one this year. You know, every year the DPC, it grows. There are some changes along the way. You know, there is some flack online. But, uh, you know, all in all, you guys, once again, you know, you guys killed it with that. Well, we hooked we hooked KJ. So KJ has yep. definitely been a huge friend of the show. Um, we have nothing but love for, for Mr. Jones. He is the editor of Diesel Power Magazine these days. He brought us on at a, at a very, very friendly kind of way of yep. like, hey, DPC is in a short amount of time. Would you guys like to be the official podcast? And we said, yes, but we can't, we can't attend. So last year we weren't able to attend. So we jumped on the phone. We started grabbing guys. I want to give a huge shout out to I, it's McCoy Black. You are mm -hmm. one funny motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy episode. You're right, my friend. Yeah, ab absolute right. And then of course Charlie Keeter, the yeah. winner, two time winner, uh, back to back wins from Charlie Keeter. Chris, that was your first episode with us. That was my first mm -hmm. podcast host episode for sure. So we've gotten a ton of questions about this. Guys have asked what happened to Danny. Danny uh, decided he wanted to put his focus and attention on other things to do professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris was in in a situation where he could jump in and fill in for Danny uh, for a short amount of time, and then we were going to fire him and get somebody good at it. Right. Uh, we just <laughs> haven't done that yet. Yeah. Uh, that's that's actually not true. Chris stepped up in a huge way and helped out the show. Uh, yes, we were really did. worried about how, what was going to happen. Uh, I had a pretty honest conversation when um, when it was coming up that there was nobody else I thought could do it. Chris, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. That thank means a lot. You. Thanks, Radio You're still a fuckhead. But, I, I'm not right. saying I'm not. You know? <laughs> uh, so, Chris, you spearheaded a lot of conversion money. Yeah. So, you know, when I started, that was beginning of June. You know, and like I said, guys, every week we all sit down and talk about what the next month or the next week's going to hold. And I told Paul and Rich, I was like, dude, we need to do a conversion month. People love fucking conversions at the shop when we have guys on the phone. Mm -hmm. We get this question all the time. So why not have a month dedicated to that? So that was August. We also love conversions. Yeah. If I could just be honest, all I think. Oh, I know me. I know you. Chris, mm -hmm. what about you? Favorite, favorite build out there right now today on the road, conversion or not? Uh, it would be an, a non-conversion, I would non say. Yeah, but okay. you know, when when you when you really think about it, if I had to talk about a truck that I've driven that I am very passionate about that I love, it's the Durber. So okay. it is a conversion. Conversion. Um, but you know, it goes both ways. It, it gets tough because very rarely do I get into a conversion that drives the way I would expect it. Right. Okay. But at the same time, like the Durber, it is a conversion, but it's. It's like a half conversion, you know. Like let, let's just be honest here. Can, I think I think that's a compliment to Eric Swanson to saying that he did his Absolutely. conversion so good yeah. that it feels like it fits. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, you know, and not to discredit any of the guys out there, but you know, you get into a Ford with a Cummins and a Ford transmission. Uh, I haven't been in one that that's like, damn, that thing drives awesome. Like it's a badass build. There's, but we had we yeah, interviewed we, did. we yeah. interviewed your customer. Uh, uh, what, what was his? Does that, who remembers his name? We're gonna look. Like I know such his assholes. name. I know his name. Excursion. I had Excursion. tuned the truck. Excursion. I know yep, what he looks yep, like. Yeah. I can picture nine, in my head. Yeah. What, now, now he's gonna call us and yep. be like, "You guys are assholes." Yep. But and he uh, lives like an hour away from he's us. Too. Such a cool yep. truck, by the way. Such a bad such a cool truck. truck. Um, so th there are there are some great conversions out there. Yeah. Big shout out to Nick Pregnitz, who's been on and off the show. <laughs> Just forever. has eight eight, con eight swaps. A swap you know? of con yeah. 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 He a has squad. a plethora of conversions. Right. Yes. <laughs> Conversion squad. Uh, Eric Swanson from Durburb. Sean Patterson from Diesel Conversion so Specialist. So much fun interviewing him. He was awesome. I don't want to yeah. say he was the smartest guy we interviewed this year, but definitely the smartest guy we interviewed in that three month segment. I mean, I would buy from him. <laughs> I, would, I would buy from him. He was so sharp and like. 
he handled all of like I wrote questions on purpose, which I never do yep. to like kind of poke at Fords. Like I just wanted yeah. to be a little bit of a dick to Fords, and he just he handled every one of them so professionally. <laughs> um, right up until we were like, so what's the most common truck that you see swaps purchase for? He's like six liters, <laughs> duh, <laughs> fucking dumbass. Uh, I don't think he was that aggressive. No. Ryan Worley. So yeah, we had mentioned good. Ryan Worley earlier. Mm-hmm. He was a lot of fun because he was literally sweating I know. in yeah. the re- recording room. His palms, like you could just tell, he was like, "Man, I don't want to, I don't want to sound or look like an idiot." And we're like, "Well, Ryan, we're not filming you. It's just recording, so you're going to sound like an idiot, not look like an yeah. idiot." And he did awesome. He did like, awesome. He was a lot of fun. And yeah. that truck, I've said this before, you need to see it in person. Yeah. Oh, you you can't yeah. appreciate pictures of it. I mean, right. you can, but like you you don't get the hey, full impact. Black pearl powder coat, my friend. Um, I will say, Ryan. Ryan has this like unique quality where like most guys who work in the shop or work in in high end, very sensitive, very meticulous kind of work like yeah. he does. Right. He's in the fab yeah. shop. Um, they're usually not very interesting of interviews. Mm-mm. Right. Because th- that's usually a very dry, boring person. Ryan has so much personality. He just doesn't know he has personality. <laughs> I think that's right? good. Yeah, I agree. I think right? part of that is is because he has a passion for diesel. You know, this is this is what gets him out of bed. Like he's he is a person that's doing what he loves to do. He's yeah. not a welder or you know a fabricator at a shop, and right. he just that's what he does. It's much more in depth than that, which I think that holds some mm-hmm. character value. There, it comes through. I yeah. think yep. all the whirlies are like that. Oh, know? they are. That is that is in the whirly blood for sure. Yeah, for sure. And um, I think he's just so down to earth, you know, kind of yeah. reminds you of a farmer talking to a farmer. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Sure. for sure. Just really into it and whatever. So, Ryan, you country as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we love you. It's, it's been a blast. Yeah. Um, okay, that, that's kind of our year in a wrap up. Uh, what I wanted to do now, guys, was just go through and hit some of our personal yeah. favorites. Uh, Chris, why don't you kick it off? Give me two of your personal favorites. Man, my personal favorite was Manfred. Lope and Smoke Tunes. <laughs> you goofy, goofy, <laughs> fuck you, Manfred. I love your laugh. He was an awesome episode. He was an awesome interview. So much so much energy out of that guy. You you say Manfred and I start laughing. Yeah, <laughs> dude, seriously. <laughs> Longhorn Fab Shop. So I'm, I'm, I got to meet Manfred right before we did this episode at the XDP event. Um, so I'm at XDP Nationals and I'm over. I'm talking to him. We might have had one or two drinks talking after the show, and it's um, so like 12 of them later. And I'm like, motherfucker, you are known for smoking lope tunes. Like that's that's what you do. And he's like, no, no, smoke, it's not smoking lope tunes <laughs> and traction bars. And like traction what bars, the fuck, right? Uh, if you have not listened to that episode and you would like to laugh a lot. It is, I think it's by far the funniest mm-hmm. episode we've ever done. And that we've was, done a lot of funny yeah, episodes. I mean, the budget build episodes mm-hmm. we did with, uh, with Tranny Wade and, and with Tr- Wade. Yep, Wade yep. was hilarious. Wade was a ton of fun. Tranny was a ton of fun. Anytime I can gang up on you and shit on you, I am all for yeah, it. Yeah, I'll never be a competitor in a budget build. Yeah, well, I will only okay. be a moderator Well, you try forward. to put donks on a truck for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would say the only other, like my, my highlight as far as like what was funny, Manfred. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, I would say Brett Keel's twelve hundred horse yeah. two wheel drive shorty was awesome. That's uh, so we were just talking about what our favorite trucks currently yeah. driving on the road. That's it. That's my that's favorite. Your, truck. That's your shit. That is the okay. regular cab short bed LB seven big nasty twin kit two wheel yeah. drive. Dude, there's nothing that feels like driving that truck. No, there's nothing. Nothing. Um, I've been in seven hundred and fifty. So when I first started at Duramax Tuner, my first week here, Nick put me behind the wheel of a seven hundred and fifty twin turbo Cummins, the yep. old white truck. Yep. I was like, "Get after it!" And like, you know, I've been working here for like three days, so I'm scared to death, right? But yeah, my foot's on the floor. Um, there's nothing. There's just no. nothing in the world that's like that truck to feel that light, to be that nimble. Well, the, it, it was just amazing. Yeah, but you yeah. also have the responsiveness and the drivability of the truck. Like there is so much that truck packs one of the nastiest punches out of anything that I've had or driven in the shop. Oh yeah, it it really is a unique build. Yeah. It's sad to see that Brett wants to sell that thing to me. So no, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I had a kid this year. I can't do it. Yeah, I offered to make grand for it so. <laughs> <laughs> for the twin kit. Yeah. You, you offered savage. <laughs> it's like some Chris Emke truck buying yeah, shit right no there. Shit. No shit. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, I, I, I'll do two. Um, the Scottsdale ride along. That was a lot of fun. It was hot as shit that day, it, but it, it was, was a ton of fun. Shit. Yeah, that was um, fun. Yeah. Chris and it, or Chris, I, I meant to say, fucking Radio Rich put us in the blooper reel. I yes, think it was I that did. video. So what's the blooper reel? Let, you know. So okay, Duramax Tuner every year, Rich takes a bunch of the videos and a bunch of the outtakes and puts together a yep. blooper reel. If you have not, jump on the Duramax Tuner YouTube page. 
Check out the blooper reel. It's always up there. It's fucking hilarious. Paul the and podcast I, made it. Yep. Podcast made it with it's, the Scottsdale ride along. It's not there yet. Oh, it's going to okay. go there. But there are old ones up there that you okay. can Okay, yeah. yeah it's, see mm-hmm. blooper reels. You'll see Chris and I a lot in them because Chris is yep. four wheel drive burnouts. Terrible to do four wheel drive burnouts. With. Right. I'm the I'm best, guys. <laughs> Even just you say, every time I hear somebody say Ford and Ground, yeah, no. I just, my, my, my blood teeth, boils. My teeth, I grind my teeth. I oh. oh, you motherfucker. Um, okay, so that that was a blast. The Scottsdale driver, <laughs> um, that's where, yeah, so you'll see it. You'll have that one up, Rich. I think so. We've got to extract a couple something. of things, but we're going to put it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be up next month. You guys will be able to see it. It was really funny. It made, it made the reel. Um, let's see my other one. Fucking Ryan Milliken, <laughs> the shitter walk on at the UCC was probably one of my favorite parts of the UCC. Yeah, my eyes just bulged. Non competition. So, me and Danny and Rich are standing outside of like our our booth that right. we have right to do all the episodes in. And we're just like in this walkway, and all of a sudden Ryan Milliken comes walking up. Now we got microphones. It's a little windy. We're like trying to hold. And I'm, I'm just like seeing. I'm like opportunity, right? Like Ryan Milliken, how's it going? You just walked into a podcast. I'm, hey, oh, uh, uh, cool man. Yeah, I'll be right back. I gotta go take a shit. And like <laughs> walks past us to the next door, which we didn't realize we were standing in front of the bathroom. <laughs> and like, walks into the bathroom, and I'm like, uh, maybe we should move ten feet over. <laughs> but uh, he he did come back and join us for an episode. So Ryan w- was a blast. He was cool. very, very funny. He was it was great to interview. Um, the thing about interviewing Ryan Milliken is you know he's going to say something mildly offensive to somebody. Yeah. You know, you're just hoping that they get to hear it. I mean, same with his Facebook posts. I love it. Right. Him. Right. Yeah, no. For <laughs> sure. For sure. Oh, God. Uh, All right. Yeah, let's see. So, Rich, what what did you have? What was some of your favorites from I, last year? I really liked the Whirly episode with mm-hmm. the uh, C10. Okay. Uh, that was my favorite because I like it when we do the interviews in house as opposed to over the phone because I'm kind of picky about audio, you know. <laughs> and uh, the in house stuff is a lot nicer, sounds a lot nicer. And mm-hmm. Ryan is a really good guy. And then we were able to do photos yep. outside after the podcast, and those went over really well on mm-hmm. the Facebook page. So that was my favorite, I think. Awesome. My favorite episode. What, Rich? While we got you here, I think we're gonna we're gonna skew right into this. Um, What's your least favorite part about editing the podcast? What's your least favorite part about having to do work on the podcast since this is all your fault and your idea? Right. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so I get the podcast and I get the files and I put them in the computer and I start editing them. And then I see where Chris has laughed <laughs> and those are pegged and it's like bright red across the top of the audio file where, <laughs> where Chris is uh, laughed. Every fucking episode then. What yeah. I love, what I, not to steal the limelight from you, but when we do our product videos yeah. or anytime we're doing interviews, I'll fuck up. I'll do at least six or seven takes. Probably why I have a lot of the footage on the blooper reels yeah, every year. Right. And every time Rich, like, he'll take a deep breath, get his composure in check, and he's like, you're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm like, Rich, shut the fuck up. You're lying. You know, like, does you're paid not, to say that. It does not matter how bad we do. Rich no. is like a mom with yep. that. He is like, you're doing, you're just, you're doing, you're doing great. Really that was awesome. That was really, great really good. effort. I could feel your passion. Yeah. If you could do everything different, <laughs> we'll try that. We'll just do a take with you doing the opposite yeah. of what you just did. It's just, it's just, a, I mean, you guys are coachable to a point, but yeah. you're not, you know, you're, you're just kind of do this when you have to. It's mm-hmm. not like you do it professionally. So it's better just to kind of like go with the flow yeah. if you know what i mean just okay. kind of go with the flow that's this industry though man you go with yeah. the flow so chris is your least favorite part of editing the podcast <laughs> i dig that um <clears throat> what what's your favorite podcast that's not about diesel trucks I, I like planet money a lot i like slate um political gab fest is that anime porn or what yeah. is that exactly slate <laughs> anime hold on porn. you heard slate <laughs> what is it one more time it's slate political because I know fest. Slate and, and Political Gab Fest, and your political thought went right fest. to porn, huh? Dude, I yeah. just know what he's into. You just... <laughs> <laughs> Peg, right now, Rich yep, is, there it is. Rich is hot. He's just seeing rats all is. the way across. <laughs> that was Peg. No, I have to peg that. Uh, I'm sorry, to, Rich. I have to fix that. That's all right. Anyway, so... Um, that's what I do, and then, uh, what else? What else are we going to talk about? Um... So that would be my favorite podcast is political stuff and planet money. Chris, do you listen to any podcast besides DPP? Um, I listened to a couple of like motivational speakers before. Yeah. Like who? 
Oh God! Um, don't put me on the spot. Like some straight up Tony Robbins? Are you um, Are you really fucking with Donald C. Kelly? Like what, what's your jam? <laughs> don't what's don't. Your jam? Lincoln? Yeah, don't get me started. Um, I don't know. It was honestly like a year ago, okay. year and a half ago. So I don't, no no recent podcast. Guys, for you I'll be honest. I don't listen to podcasts, and I do not listen to our podcast because I don't like listening to my voice. Now you used to though. So before you hosted, we would talk. I would about I would listen to a couple here and there. Think about how much better I could be at it than you. Right. Joking, but no. I mean, I did. I listened to a couple here or there. I am a true enthusiast. This is what I live and do. Like, I mm-hmm. enjoy diesel trucks. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I've always been passionate about it. So I do listen to them, but rarely. I'll, I'll listen to, like little snippets of what uh, Rich will post like on Facebook, and I'll be like scrolling through Facebook, and it'll pop up, and I'll just listen to it for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not much of a podcast listener. I if I go into the gym, I'm listening to music. I don't want to listen to a podcast. And if I'm driving, I want to listen to music. Otherwise, like I'm go, go, go. I don't like listening to I stuff. Have, mm-hmm. I have recently become obsessed with everything from Gimlet. Uh, oh, Gimlet, so, yeah. yeah. So if you don't know Gimlet Media, uh, came from Planet Money and This American Life. Uh, Awesome. There's a TV show they're launching about the uh, the whole startup podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. That, we were talking about, we're talking that. about yep. that. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Reply Now. Reply All. Reply All. Reply All. One of, one of my favorites. Uh, listen to that. Listen to Startup. Uh, if you're not listening to last podcast on the left, fuck oh, you. Oh, my gosh. So Man. it's the funniest, most disgusting podcast you've ever heard about serial killers. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, gruesome and, and, and hilarious. And thanks to that podcast, I actually read one of the books they talk about. Do you really? George or the uh, Ed, Ed Gein. Ed Gein. And that book was amazing. And then I read another book by that same author about the Mad Sculptor, which is another murder. And I don't know if they've talked about that yet on the podcast. Yeah. But I want to say one thing, and that is that I painted a wall in our studio here in order to do backdrop work for video. You yeah. Know, I painted it gray. And it took me like three Sundays to do it. Cause it and the whole time I was painting, I had a last podcast on the left on. Really? And it was just wonderful time it was, flies it does and it was just the perfect mix between painting this drudgery and then listening to that podcast <laughs> it was perfect I, I would say the other one that i i uh, have been listening to since they started uh and a big shout out to ryan Jolina since he's gotten involved they've renamed it it's now the diesel podcast right uh patrick ellis um mm-hmm. From Street Diesel Power, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm saying that yeah. right. Uh, they have a podcast about diesel performance. If you're listening to our show, you should be listening to their yep. show and vice versa. Uh, great group of guys. Yeah. Ryan spends more time traveling than I could imagine. Yeah, uh, he's just he's pretty much on the road, and every right. once in a he while they let him go home. He's yeah, very rarely so is he, he home. Point being is he he gets out into yep. like the actual on the feet in the industry yep. all over the country. Uh, so I, I do like their podcast. Mm-hmm. I think it's really good. Um, Sound quality, same thing. We, we get a little bit of feedback about our sound quality on phone interviews. It's really, really tough to record through the phone, guys, just so you know. We, we do do our best. It, uh, it sounds as good as we possibly can make it. Yep. Uh, but the only way to do like a good remote interview is to actually send somebody audio equipment, record the two audios separately, and then dub them over each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is just way too involved. We're just not a big enough operation for the podcast to do something like that. So bear with us. We are always trying to find new ways to improve our audio quality. But uh, as you guys heard, Rich is kind of crazy about that stuff. So we do, yeah. do the yeah. best we possibly we'll keep can. working on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Other than that, I just want to say to all of our listeners, thank you so fucking much. Uh, this has been such a crazy experience to do this podcast, to see it grow. Uh, we are cresting uh, 750,000 downloads in, a, in our entirety. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're uh, constantly seeing growth month over month, and that is because of you guys. So we really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Keep liking, sharing. I mean, whatever you guys are doing, please, please, please keep it up. I- I'm sorry that you guys listen to us, you know, but <laughs> the content is there. That's all that matters. Sorry I have to listen to you. To okay. you. Okay. Uh, We're good at this. Yeah. We, should be a million, we should be at a million downloads by February, I think, or March. I mean, so yeah. if we could, by end of first quarter, if we could, yep. that's where our listeners come in. Guys, help us out. Help us out. Share some shit. <laughs> uh, for tonight, I do just want to say, again, thank you guys, and have a very merry, merry Christmas. Yeah, and a happy new year because this yeah. is going to be the last one that uh, we're going to record for the year yes it is so this is our en- year end right here yep. 2017 dude i wish we had some confetti to throw and yeah. some you know we did a great job we did <laughs> <laughs> good job this goes to rich yeah this all goes right. to rich all right man thanks guys thank you thank Bye-bye. you
Calibrated Power Solutions, the leading North American developer of clean diesel power and home of DuramaxTuner.com, is the proud sponsor of the Diesel Performance Podcast. Calibrated Power develops emissions-equipped calibrations for a wide variety of diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, Jeep, John Deere, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. That's 815-568-7920. If you'd like to contact the Diesel Performance Podcast, send us a message through Facebook or email paul at duramaxtuner.com or chris at c-e-h-m-k-e at duramaxtuner.com. You can also reach him by phone. Chris's extension is 2121. Paul's is 2122. I like Planet Money a lot. I like Slate um, Political Gab Fest. Is that anime porn or what is yeah. that exactly? It's slate. <laughs> anime Hold on. Porn. You heard Slate? <laughs> what is it? One more time. It's slate Political. Because I know fest. Slate and, and Political Gab Fest, and your thought went right fest. to porn, huh? Dude, I yeah. just know what he's into. You just. <laughs> Hey, right now, Rich is head, he's just seeing rats all the way across. (laughs) That was pegged. Now I have to peg that. I'm sorry, Rich. I have to fix that. That's all right. Anyway, so... Um.